Hi, Bob here again, AB5N, with another installment of the IC7000 instructional video. Great radio from ICOM, packed with digital signal processing technology. Today we're going to look at something really cool, how to get into the factory setup menus. So let's take a look at how that's done. Here's the back of the 7000. Notice we've got our four little jacks back here. I took a standard 1 8 inch mono plug, a Walkman style, doesn't even have to be stereo, put an alligator clip across it, and it's now a shorting plug and it goes into the second hole here from the center which is the CIV PC control hole. When you push it all the way in it's going to short that out. Now here's our 7000 front panel and to get into the factory setup menus we're going to be pressing two buttons and holding down uh, the power at the same time. That's the preamp and tuner buttons. I'm going to press them both with my thumb. I can feel them both click in. Press the power button on. As soon as we see adjust on the screen we can release. And now we are in the factory setup menus. Now I like it a little bit darker here. Uh, as we go through these menus, you'll see there are four here. The first one is version. It just tells you the EEPROM version of the firmware inside. As we go into one of these sub-control menus, we press the reference adjust. The ref adjust is only going to be for the master reference oscillator in there. And remember that this value is in hexadecimal over here. Look at that. That's 8C. You're not going to have a nice number to, to deal with there. So you might write that down. But that's to calibrate your master oscillator. I'm going to leave mine at 8C. To go back up, I'm just going to press the left button. Now, transmit and receive is where all the action is over here. If I press the transmit, remember that to go through the different items in the menu, you're going to press these up and down, the up and down arrows here, and you can see it go through several different things. Final, uh, final idle current on the finals at the 50 megahertz finals there, and HF finals. And we can see that it goes into the 2 meter final idle current. All of these things are going to adjust the linearia, linearity of the uh, transmitter. And of course, that would be you putting a meter in there at a particular point and adjusting the uh, idle current on the finals. And remember, these things are adjusted with the main tuning dial. So we tune this, turn this back and forth, and it changes that hexadecimal value over there. So we can go through all of the things that are in there. A transmitter, I really didn't adjust much at all. Uh, but you can see it goes through a lot of stuff and, and when you want to get back I just sort of go back on the left button several times and eventually I get back to the top of the list and I'm back up to the four menus up here. Now the receive is where I did some adjustments and this allows you to adjust the total chain gain or receiver gain on the different uh, bands. So here we go, HF 50 meters, it's set at 85. Remember this is not 85 out of 100, this is hexadecimal. And you might, uh, you might adjust this while listening to your general background noise level with your antenna connected. Everybody has a generally different background noise level. And then tune your main tuning dial. I go for not seeing any meter movement whatsoever when there is just the lowest amount of background noise and no splatter, no signals coming in whatsoever. I don't want to see any meter movement. If you were to, to adjust it too much clockwise over here, you'd hear, of course, you'd start to see the meter come up with no signal whatsoever, meaning you are then above the noise floor. You don't want that much system gain. What is more important than, than HF gain, because we're not that concerned, is um, is receive gain. There's the S meter levels there for S9 and S0. So if you wanted to, to tweak that in a little bit more, you make your meter, meter respond a little bit more, you could. I would write down the initial values first so you can go back to those. But here we go, the uh, tuned bad, bandpass filters for different bands. My gosh, you could, these can be tuned on the fly here electronically. But the total gain, total receive gain on 144 and 30, uh, 430 megahertz was something I adjusted because I felt that I had a very low background noise level and I wanted the absolute maximum gain to, to be at what we call the noise floor. And I just sort of turned the main tuning dial up and saw this value change until I heard the background noise come up to the point where it just seemed too high. And I ended up coming up about 10-15% over the factory stock setting on that, where I still wasn't getting any meter deflection with my antennas and preamps on and connected, but uh, with any signal whatsoever, the meter would come off the floor. And that showed me that I had maximum gain, usable gain, uh, in the 144 and 2 meter sections. So that where you go, you can go all the way through those. Remember, though, also that whenever any of these values are changed, you have to hit the set button on the right for it to actually take 
So there's, there's the double check sheet there, otherwise it will not change the value. Okay, so anything you're going to change and experiment with, go ahead and, and write down the original value, and then remember to hit your set button, and then you get out of it. Remember that you can get out of the factory setup simply by pressing the power button, and you'll be back home. But uh, don't change anything you're not sure of. So there we go. I just hit the power button off, boot it back up without holding the button, and we're back in our normal operating mode. So there you have it, how to do the custom factory menus and settings. Remember, don't touch anything you're not sure of in there, and write down the settings before you modify them with the main tuning dial, then hit that set button. Now, another thing to consider with the IC7000 is um, there is a design error in it, and that is that the HM151A microphone does not have enough power output or audio drive to drive the transmitter into full power without using the compressor on sideman. And in FM, the deviation is definitely down in the 3 kilohertz range you're going to have light audio. So what I've done is re-engineered a total fix for the HM151 by changing out the element with an absolutely perfect element for the job, re-engineered the coupling capacitor, rolled off a little bit of that muddy bass so we've got a nice clean audio, and engineered it such that at 50% mic level you have perfect drive for full output, full ALC deviation, and beautiful, beautiful sounding audio on FM and, and sideband. So remember, you can uh, get that from me. I sell it as a kit, and I also will modify your microphone, have it in and out, in a couple of hours, certainly back coming back to you in less than 24 hours, and you can check it out at the website, www.7000mic.com. Go ahead and check it out, and you can, of course, email me with questions you have, and remember, the kit is only for DX stations there, so I'll have that all history for you. That problem will be history for you. So tune in again for more tips and tricks on the DVD instructional about the ICOM 7000.